Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Not too many people are familiar with exactly what happened to Al Hussein, and especially since it's Muharram, um, it's something that we should familiarize ourselves with. We should familiarize ourselves with his struggle, with the tragedy that occurred at Karbala, with his character, with his merits, with him as a whole. Because remember, Al Hussein isn't a monopoly for Shias. Al Hussein is for all of the Muslims. In the past, I've made a video about the tragedy at Karbala from a Sunni perspective, and I'm going to be linking that at the end of the video, inshallah. Um, in this specific video, of course, I'm going to be speaking about the topic of Al Hussein and Al Imama and how his actions actually conflict with the concept of a divinely appointed position. Now, this opinion that Al Hussein was a divinely appointed Imam actually conflicts with his actions. And if you actually hold this view that he's a divinely appointed Imam, then you've attributed a deficiency to him because of some of the points that I'm going to be mentioning um, later on in this video. So I'll be sharing, inshallah, three examples of how his actions directly conflict with this view that he was a divinely appointed infallible imam. So the first issue is Al-Hassan relinquishing his political power to Muawiyah and allowing Muawiyah to become the Khalifa. Now a lot of Shias when speaking to them about this specific uh, fact, they will say something along the lines of, well, Al-Hassan gave up his political power, but he's still a spiritual imam, and imama is a spiritual position. But if that's the case, then why make such a big deal about um, Saqifah? Uh, because one could simply say, well, yeah, the people chose Abu Bakr, but Ali is still the spiritual imam, so therefore it shouldn't matter that he did not um, become the Khalifa. In any case, in any case, Al Hassan's relinquishing the power made uh, Muawiyah become Khalifa, and Al Hassan and Al Hussein both moved to Al Medina. When they were in Al Medina, they didn't really hold a spiritual uh, imam position either. Um, they were not teaching the people uh, matters of the deen in the same way their father did, and in the same way their um, children and, and uh, grandchildren progeny did and that's why you barely find any hadiths in which Al Hassan and Al Hussein were teaching people the matters of their deen it's they were not seen as spiritual authorities again in the way that Ali was seen as spiritual authority in the way that Zain al-Abideen and al-Baqir and uh, Ja'far al-Sadiq they were seen as spiritual authorities at their time. So no, Al-Hassan and Al-Hussein, um, despite their high position in both the eyes of Ahl-Sunnah and Shias, they were not seen as spiritual authorities during their time. Now, some Shias will say something along the lines of, well, Al-Hassan and Al-Hussein were not allowed to. Um, Al-Hassan lived from like the year 40 until the year 50, 10 years as the alleged spiritual Imam. And Hussein uh, lived in Medina for the next 10 years. Um, Hussein himself in those 10 years did not take this position up and did not, did not teach the people their deen. He did not take the position of an infallible spiritual imam. Yeah, so some Shias will say, well, yeah, but that's because Muawiyah and uh, uh, the people that he put in power wouldn't allow Al Hassan and Hussein to take that spiritual position. However, if Al Hassan um, did not relinquish power to Muawiyah, then he would be able to teach people their deen in the same way that Ali taught people their deen during the time that he was in Kufa. So there's no good answer to this. Um, Al Hassan and Hussein, their actions clearly conflicts with this idea of them being um, divinely appointed spiritual and political imams. So if this appointment was real, then this would be something that they conflict with um, and it would be some sort of a deficiency. Uh, I would never attribute this to them. Uh, the second example of an action that was taken by Al-Hussein that conflicts directly with imama is how 
um, he treated the whole situation is connected to the previous point um, in regards to uh, his reaction to um, Al-Walid bin Utbah. Now, Al-Walid bin Utbah was the governor of Medina at the time, and him and Al-Hussein conflicted with one another in terms of a piece of land in the Marwa, which is north of Medina. When this occurred, Al-Hussein said to the governor of Medina, I swear by Allah that you will be fair with me, or else I will take my sword and go to the mosque of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and call upon the Pact of Fudul. When Al-Walid found out that things were getting out of hand, um, he became fair with Al-Hussein until Al-Hussein was satisfied. So this whole episode uh, conflicts with this idea that Al-Hussein was a divinely appointed imam because if Al-Hussein was a divinely appointed imam, then he would be acting like this towards Muawiyah. But instead, he was acting like this towards Al-Walid. Um, and Al-Hussein, of course, he was oppressed by Al-Walid and he uh, attained his right when this occurred. Um, however, what he should have done was he should have done the same with Muawiyah and he should have taken back his right from Muawiyah, his political right and his spiritual right to teach people their deen as an appointed infallible imam. And finally, of course, the third and final point is what occurs in Karbala itself. When Al Hussein is at Karbala and he is surrounded by the troops of Ubaidullah bin Ziyad, he says a specific statement that is recorded both by Sunnis and Shias. According to Abu Makhnaf, who is the earliest, uh, most authoritative Shi'i source in regards to the events at Karbala, he says that this specific statement is the position of the majority of the Muhaddithin. And when he's saying Muhaddithin, he's not referring to the Muhaddithin of Ahl sunnah he's referring to the Shia Muhaddithin, he's quoting his uncle as well. He says that according to the majority of the Muhaddithin, al Hussein salam said to the troops of Ubaidullah, allow me one of three, either to return from where I came, meaning to Mecca or to Medina, or to place my hand onto the hand of Yazid, and he should decide what should occur between us, or you send me to one of the borders of the lands of Islam to live among them with their rights and their duties. Now, these opinions and these statements, um, they would be fine and they would make sense um, from anyone who would be making them in such a circumstance. However, these specific statements are not befitting of an infallible, divinely appointed imam who would never do such a thing. Now, for the Shias that are unfamiliar with this type of information and are um, doubtful of what I'm saying, I urge you to return to your mashayikh um, at the Husseiniyat, um, ask them for sources, ask them uh, for classical authoritative Shi'i sources about the martyrdom of Hussein, and I strongly recommend in general um, to take your mashayikh to task push them to provide you with sources. Don't just sit there and um, consume all the information that you're getting about the life of Hussein and his martyrdom at Karbala. There's a lot of things that you'll hear from the pulpit that does not even exist in classical Shia sources. So be diligent, it's not a small matter. In any case, once again, for those that want to learn more about the Sunni perspective, um, I'd recommend checking out my video on this subject and yeah, may Allah guide the Shias to the path of Al-Husayn alayhi salam. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.